group that's coming. Uh, for the people that were here the whole weekend, uh, we're going to go over the secret handshake. <laughs> I'm going to reveal you the answer that you've been looking for. There'll be co- an increase in donations would be helpful. A little bit slight little. This will start the retreat from Paul. <laughs> the retreat from Paul starts at 10 o'clock tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you see me at the airport tomorrow, we will continue for the next time I'm here. You'll probably do a lot better when I'm not here. I'll travel a lot later. So, what were we doing this whole weekend? We're just entertaining a simple invitation. To look. Yeah. And then if you look and then you entertain that you're not what's looking, that's the scene. Yeah. So when you look and you look and you look for it, and in that looking, 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 you can entertain I'm not that which looks, yes, that's seen. At the exact time, it's been held as you looking at that exact moment. If you may, if you're not that you that's looking, that's seen. At the exact moment, the you that's looking, the you that's looking, the you that's looking, we're just slipping in a little invitation. You may not be that. If that's entertained, and something happens, at that moment of you looking is what's seen. Incredibly fast, bamo. Because nothing has to change. Because what seeing is what you are looking for, and it's actually what you are looking from. Is what seeing, yeah. So when you believe today, you've been looking for things, yes. And I'm not just talking noble ideas such as spirituality, but looking for your keys or whatever, yeah, your pants or whatever like that. In that looking, if you would just possibly entertain that sense of being the you that's looking, obviously, because if there's looking, the mind's reaction to looking is there must be a looker. It's the implied assumption. Every time seeing is called looking, yeah, there's an assumption that there must be a looker. Looking cannot be seen as just looking, because that would be seeing. Yeah? Looking is, an, is seeing implied with a looker. Yeah? That's all it is. It's seeing that has been held and interpreted as a you looking. Yeah? There's no difference whatsoever. So, what's seeing is what I am. Yeah? So, what's looking is what you are looking for. But at the act of looking for is the seeing. There's not a shred of difference whatsoever between looking and seeing, except that the looking is an interpretation of seeing. It's a mental interpretation. The mental reaction to seeing is, I'm looking. And as soon as the seeing is claimed as, I'm looking, then it hides the seeing, obviously, and then the rest of your experience is you looking for, or maybe you not looking for. When you get tired of looking for it, you'll do not looking for it, which is another form of looking. Yeah? But all the while, all the while, every moment, what's looking is what you are looking for. So every, exper- every sense of looking for, that's what's looking. Every sense of looking for. It doesn't matter how much meaning your mind gave to what you're looking for, be it a noble spiritual clue, or just like I said, a butter knife, yeah? What's looking is what you're looking for. It's not based on the meaning your head gives it. It's every moment of what's looking is what's seen. Being interpreted as you looking for. And so in the act that you cannot deny that you cannot stop, which is seeing, it does the next best thing, it claims it, and says, I'm looking. And if you buy that first statement, then you are in... It 
you buy that first statement, then looking for just geometrically progresses more and more and more and more and more and more. And the more looking you do, right, it never creates, creates any more seeing. Yeah? The more looking you do, it actually exasperates it, and you just can't help but look more and more and more until the point where you get to the point of not looking, which is just another form of looking. So also, what's looking is what you're not looking for, also. So right this second, the invitation, before you sat down, the invitation was being offered. When you leave here, the invitation is being offered. Yes, this is hopefully an invitation because you're looking right now. You're looking at me thinking, what, who is this fucking guy or whatever? Who knows what you're doing in your head? I don't care really. But the seeing is happening. Yes? The seeing is actually the vehicle for all the selfing. Without the seeing there would be no reaction by a mental process, which is the sense of being a self. Yeah. The only way the, self, the sense of the mental process has a life is by claiming life. So claiming life is the seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. Yes? It's the conscious contact that happens during the day. The mental process claims it by saying, I'm the one who's seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. That becomes a form of looking called self-centeredness. And now it interprets life based on you. So it claims a life. It doesn't have one of its own, so it claims it. Yeah. So how does it claim it? It takes possession or ownership of consciousness. It says, I'm conscious. And therefore, as soon as it says, I'm conscious, defined by the rules of this split mind or dualistic Interpretation, it either has an experience of being conscious or unconscious. And then that feeling of being conscious or unconscious is always based on what it did or didn't do. So you become God here. The mental process plays God. It does. I mean, does God tell you you are getting close to it, or do you tell you you're getting close to God? Does God inform you, you're getting closer, Paul, or do you inform yourself, Paul, you're getting closer to God? I would say it's the latter, yeah? If God was saying you're getting closer to Him, I wouldn't believe that God. <laughs> because there's no way to get closer to what you're already at, yeah? So if He starts whispering, you're getting closer to me, no, 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 you're definitely going to have an experience of being far from it sooner or later. <laughs> because it's inev It's inevitable. If there's a belief in closeness, there's a belief in farness. It's just like the same thing. If you believe you achieve something, you can believe you're going to lose it. Yeah? If something is based on you, it's not stable, is it? It's based on what you do and what don't do. Yes? Is that peace? Peace is enough to be if it's based on circumstances, but if it's based on your condition, it's even less peaceful, yeah? because constantly there'll be a fear that something's going to happen to change that peace, isn't it? How could you enjoy peace of mind if you believe in time? It's impossible. Because your mind, your mind will entertain that maybe later I won't be having peace. So if you have the idea that I'm not having peace, or I may not have peace later, how are you going to enjoy the peace of mind now? Isn't that idea an agitation of the mind? If you're listening to it, yeah? That you may not have peace later? How could that not be an agitation of what you call the peace of mind? Peace of mind can only come out of time. It cannot be a time-based event because time has many, many possibilities. Anything can happen tomorrow. So the solution is so beautiful because... In a quote-unquote, in a way, it's fueling what you call the problem. All day, the selfing is brought to you by the seeing. But you're not seeing the selfing, you're seeing from it. Yeah, That's called ignorance. You're ignoring the fact of the conscious contact because your head is claimed being the one who's in conscious contact. How are you going to ever undo that? It just must be a seeing again. 
where you finally, for me, it was entertaining. I am not that which is looking, and therefore, what the fuck's happening? What happened is, there was an obviousness of just seeing. Yeah. And then the emphasis shifted from the you that was looking for to the seeing, which is the only thing that's going on. There's no you looking for anything. There's just seeing. Yeah. There's the seeing of this idea of a you looking for something. But actually, there is no you looking for. It's only seeing, interpreted. Yeah. Your head takes seeing to be you looking for something. So basically, the source of freedom is used for your own slavery in a way, by interpreting it. Yeah. Seeing is called, I'm looking. Oh, I shouldn't be looking at that. I should be looking at this. I should get away from this, I'm look what I'm looking for, and look at something better. All this, but all the while, that's just seeing, isn't it? Just seeing. Seeing. Yeah. What else is it? Is What is that? What is it if it's not just seeing? What is it? Is it looking? How could an interpretation have any lasting imprint on what's seeing? If it's just the mind's interpreting seeing into you looking for, how could it have any effect on what's seeing? How could it blacken or darken or confuse what's seeing. It doesn't. It just catches the attention of the mind. Because the mind believes that it's the you. Yeah? It's taking the body to be what it is. So the body is its claiming the seeing and turning into you looking. What would you be without a body? How would you call what would you call you if it wasn't a body? Can you have thoughts about you in the past without picturing you as a body? Can you worry about you in the future without worrying about you as a body in the future? Try it. Try to worry about you in the future. <laughs> All right, here I go. I'm starting now. I'm starting to worry about me in the future. Oh, shit. <laughs> shit, a lot of stuff could happen to me. <laughs> yourself in the future. How do you picture yourself? Go to the past. All right, picture yourself in the past. The only way the past could seem real is to you as a body. Yeah? Obviously, it doesn't seem real if you're not a body, does it? The future without a body, there is no future, really. And there's no past without the body. They're in cahoots, in a way. Yeah? I mean, you couldn't travel to the past unless you were in the vehicle of a body. <laughs> it just wouldn't have any sense of oomph. Yeah? And the future wouldn't be able to provoke any of the amount of worrying and anxiety it can produce without it being held as a body. The future totally drops without a body being in it. Yeah? I mean, try to worry about yourself as something other than a body in the future. Let's see. I think I was in Kensington Square today. But if I look at the surveillance cameras, it was only a body that was there. So all worry entails the body, yeah? Anxiety. Either you're worrying about something that's going to happen to you as a body or someone else as a body. Yeah? Can you worry about someone 
as not a body? If you can, if they probably inhabited a body at one time. <laughs> you know what I mean? A ghost of a body. Yeah? So if you're not identified as a body, don't you, don't you feel you'd have an immunity to the thoughts about what's going to happen to you as a body in the future? And basically, actually, the whole lighting system of the future in the mental realm would be turned off? That the body is really the battery that charges that lighting system that your interest and attention goes to like a moth to a flame? Your interest and attention flies to that moth, I mean to that flame, yes? Produced by the oil and the wick of the body. Your attention and interest could not worry or get anxious or concern itself with worrying anxious without the body as being the form to worry about. And all the resentments and nostalgia and all this about the past can only be cooked in the pot of a body. Your interest and attention would only be drawn to it as the pot of the body. Without the body, what would happen? Would your interest and attention ever go to the that past? What do you call the past? Would it ever go into the future, really? What can it look? The body here. Yeah. If you weren't a body, what would claim the scene? When you felt, when you were said, I've, I've owned this river, this is the flagpole I put down in the river, what's the flagpole but a body? If you weren't a body, how could there be any feeling of looking? when all there is is seeing. The only way the mind could entertain being the looker is being a body that something could look through. Yeah? If not, the seeing would be unadorned and obvious. So the mind, the mental process, with the self, it produces this identification as a body, and then that body is the way it claims life. So life is now seen to be happening to you, and that you as a body, yes? Instead of seeing seeing it as it's happening, you see it as it's happening to me. So your reference, your mental reference, your position, your flagpole in this whole incredible story is bodily oriented. Without that, the whole thing doesn't have a leg to stand on. Literally. And your whole feeling of being on a spiritual journey is cast in a body interpretation, yes? What goes on a journey here? A spirit or a body? Yes? What goes up to the top of the mountain, sees the vision, and then falls down into the canyon of depression? The body. Yes? Life is like a journey. To what? A body. The only thing that journeys here is a body. Can you, can you watch the journeying of a spirit? If spirit is all and everything, where is it journeying to? It's only the body that gives us a sense of interpretation that this is a path and a process, that we have to go through something and we have to purify. What purifies? What purifies? The body, yeah? In a sense. You can say you're trying to purify the mind, but how do you try to purify the mind? Through the body. What would happen if your identification as a body was questioned and you entertain, I may not be that? What would happen? Find out. Yeah? Find out. That's called exploration. Really. Find out what happens. If I'm not a body, then the seeing is usually sensed to be just seeing. And really, that's that. Because everything else spins out from it being claimed as you looking. Yeah? Everything. Everything spins out from that point where the mind's presentation of you as a body 
and its act of claiming seeing as its, which is turning into self-centeredness, or self-centeredness, a form of looking, that's, there's a freedom from that, but not after it's claimed, and not after it's become identified. It's questioning what I am, or seeing what I'm not. I like seeing what I'm not, because I believe seeing what I'm not frees up that seeing, and then it's obvious that's what I am, seeing. Yeah. And it's, that's that. It doesn't have to be forever, it's now. It's that's that, and it's that's that, and 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 that's that. It's not like a one ever, forever ending, that's that. It's that's that, and 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 that's that. If you let it go of four or five more steps, that's where therapy begins. That's where a spiritual message turns into a therapeutic event. The self is still taken to be you, by either the person who's given a talk or you hearing it, and then it becomes therapy to that you. That's not the message. It's not meant to be helpful to you. That's a byproduct. It's meant to entertain the idea I'm not that you. And then everything you used to call you looking was just seeing. The interpretation of seeing could never claim seeing and turn it into looking. It can't. It's impossible. Yeah? Nothing has ever affected the basic state of seeing. It's always available at all times for every one of us. But if we keep looking for it, that's a form of blindness. It's questioning, all right, who is it that's looking for it? That's seeing. I'm not that. The mind that's identified as the body, yes, takes when you realize I'm not that, personally. <laughs> when you're seeing that you're not the body, that's the freedom from that mind. dead horse all you want, but it's fucking dead. You get off it and ride another one. So we did it the other day, right? We're sitting here. You're seeing it? The seeing happen. You're seeing it? You're seeing this object. Everyone's seeing some object in this room. And I'm seeing objects. So everyone would say the truth about the event that's going on. Everyone in this room would say, I'm seeing. Yeah. Yes? You go, I'm seeing. Yeah? Yes? No? We're sitting here. So what's happening? I'm seeing. Maybe, I don't know, but that's what I sort of see what's happening. So I'm seeing, and I'm seeing you. Yeah? I call you, and there's a name and a form, and I see you, and I see you, and I see you. And you see me yeah, as a you, yes? But all that's happening is seeing, isn't it? Well, it's the same seeing going on. This, I'm seeing these yous. And then you're seeing me as a you. Yeah. Now the mental reaction to that is it asks itself a question. Who am I? Way before self-inquiry. <laughs> it saw, it sensed the seeing, and it asked, who am I? This I'm seeing was the fact. I am seeing. And it answered its own question. Me. 
When did that happen? Have you ever did self-inquiry and you ask the question, who am I? What's the first answer the head usually gives you? Me. And then you go, oh, well, who's this me? And you go on and on and on. But first, it usually says me. Yeah. So it's recognition of I'm seeing is me. Yeah. This is the, what the mental is taking you as. And I'm seeing me. Me is what seeing is really a you. Yeah. It's a body. But I, I'm identified with this body, so I call it me. But I, I see it as like I see you. When I'm looking at this body called me, it's the same way I see this body that I call you. Yeah? So, I, we're all seeing, but then there's the sense of who am I? Because there's this, the mind's reaction to the seeing is, who is it? And so, it says it's me, which is the body. Yeah? And all the thoughts you have in the, your mental process can only cast you as a body. They can't think of you as a spirit. No thought can capture a spirit, but it captures a body pretty well. It, it actually conjures you up in thoughts about the past, and it conjures you up in thoughts about the future, the you that you're not, the body, yeah, is it? And most of us are relying on thought, aren't we, during the day? I mean, we're walking down the street, and it tells us what's going on, doesn't it? So let's say if you go to your job today at 8 in the morning and you come home at 5 and around 8 o'clock at night your mind breaks the news to you, you had a bad day. It says, you know, Mary, you had a bad freaking day today. Your boss was really on your ass. And you go, yeah. Now, you were there the whole day, though. And it took you 13 hours to come to the conclusion that you were having a bad day, yet the, it was batting all day. Where were you the 13 hours? I mean, I would think if you were conscious, you would notice that it was going bad, yeah? But why is it that we have to wait for the head to tell us what's happening? It would mean that we're unconscious, yes? Yeah? If you're living something, and yet you need to be told what's happening, it would mean you're sort of unconscious. Right? Yes. So what's causing us to be unconscious? If we're consciousness, what's seemingly causing us to be unconscious? Right. Yeah. Something must be claiming consciousness as something it does. So you believe you can be more conscious by what you do and less conscious by what you do. So now consciousness, which is all there is, becomes a verb that you're doing. Yeah. Incredible, isn't it? And seeing becomes looking... Hearing becomes, I'm hearing this. Tasting becomes, I'm here, I'm tasting this. Smelling is, I'm smelling this. Yes? Touching is, I'm touching this. And the emphasis is on the I and the object it's touching. Yeah? But the feeling, the seeing, the hearing, the tasting goes really pretty unnoticed. Because that's the vehicle of awareness. Yeah? second of every day, if you heard that. You'll be able to recognize what you're not, which is what's claiming to be what's looking. And then the seeing will be bare and unadorned, and there's a message in that. Before your grubby little mental hands get on it, it's beautiful. It's clear and perfect, seeing, and it never blinks. And I don't mean seeing visually, I mean seeing, awareness. And it's never taken a break, and it never will. To me, it's love, because it's your tendency, my tendency to go to sleep, it's constantly reminding us through six different gates. You're seeing thoughts, you're seeing objects, you're smelling, tasting, touching, and hearing, and every one of those activities is demonstrating seeing. I mean, how much more love do you want in your life? Instead of one signpost, there's six signposts before any step you ever take where your mind can say, I'm lost. 
the solution the, you're found before you're lost. Yeah. Before you can get into a story of being lost, what, pers- what preceded that story was found. Yeah? And then all through the process of thinking you're lost, found, 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 and then finally you agree, I'm found, found, and then you go, but I could be lost, found, 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 and there's not one step you could possibly take off of that trail. It's found, 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 but you're not found. That's what the minds claim. It claims it's found you. And that's what's caused us to seem lost. Yeah? The mind has claimed it's found you. And that's what causes us to feel lost. And it's truly, really, that presence is going to be sensed by your absence. When it seemed not to be you, what is the life of being absent is that presence finally. Yes? So I'm not that. Then the sense of what I am floods through. Yeah? And that sense of what I am is more convincing than any freaking retreat or any scripture or any darshan or anything else. Because it's so... It's like an unspoken yes. Not that you recognize in someone else, but you, it echoes where you are. Yeah. And it's not brought to you by any outside source. It echoes where you are as you. And it's sort of indisputable. So what? You saw it. The claiming can't happen when you see it. It only happens after you see it. (laughs) I mean, you know, before you see it. Then it claims it. And then when you think you saw it, that's a form of looking. Yeah. You saw it, so it can't claim it. If you see the act of claiming, it stops the little thief in its tracks. Yes? If you do. If you do. If you see. If you catch. Well, the thing is, thank God it's not the you that it's dependent on. (laughs) It's in the nature of seeing itself, Mm -hmm. which it always catches the thief. The seeing always sees the thief. It's the you. (laughs) The the you is in cahoots with the thief. (laughs) The you is what opened up the back door (laughs) and let him in. (gasps) Someone stole something of value of mine. Don't you feel it? That scene precedes everything else. Yeah? Yes. So. How could anything catch the seeing unawares? The mind always reacts afterwards. And by claiming it as being the one who's conscious, it causes us to be unconscious to the fact that it always arrives rises after seeing. Yes? It takes time for a mental process to occur. Seeing is timeless, yes? There's no requirements on seeing. But a mental process of the brain takes time. For it to claim the seeing, it has to take time. Yes? Timelessness doesn't have any of that restraint on it. Seeing doesn't take any time. It's a timeless event. So every moment there's seeing, which there is, it's a timeless moment. And it sees the, the rising of the mental process of claiming. Because the process takes time to arise, and it rises in awareness, and that's the seeing. So the seeing watches what arises. 
And in that seeing of what arises, the sense of I'm not that is obvious. Yeah? The interesting thing is that the mind-body can still be a little bit miserable. <laughs> yes. Even at the same. But it's not you. Mm. Still noticing. <laughs> you can still see the mind-body being miserable. <laughs> yeah. You see it, whatever arises, you have to see. You see. Yeah. yeah. Wait till you get older. I think I think sometimes... <laughs> You'll have so many stimulations going on, then you'll realize why, why you wanted to be unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> the body experience is like a never-ending kaleidoscope of different stimuli. <laughs> yeah. It's too late then, though. <laughs> But seeing, seeing something is so much different than being it, yeah? Being miserable, ooh. <laughs> being li- miserable has a lot of voiceover, doesn't it? A lot of story around why it, well, you should or shouldn't be miserable. It's such an incredible activity of mind, yeah? Once misery, physical misery is claimed, a huge story ensues. And it takes time to write that story. And, it, and it's actually, it's, like we were talking about yesterday, the mental process has a stroke. It's trying to paint something. But it's your interest and attention that gives it its color. Yeah. But the mental process is interpreting this place. And it's going to continue to interpret this place. That's what it does, yes? It reacts to life, and it says, I'm it, and it tells us about it. But the color is our intention, our, our attention and interest. Nice, nice, uh, nice way of putting it, because I'm yeah. a painter. Yes. So. so when that attention and interest isn't given, it doesn't have the effect that the other one yeah. does. Yeah? It's amazing how, how less the actual painting is to what's going on. I mean, when I paint, it's just like, oh. That's why artists are so... Maybe it's coming out while that's going on. Yeah? Yeah. Any questions about this? I've sort of shot my wad this week already, you know. It's like it's like feeding a dead horse to me. I could share and I mean Jesus Christ. How much you know it doesn't take any time to acknowledge this. And you're not going to know it more by studying it. The only thing you can know is what you're not. You can't know it. It's impossible to know it. You can intimate it. You can sense it, but you can't know it. And there's a certain point to me Information about what I'm not just distills into one bit of information. I'm not that. Once that's delivered, there's no need to, you know, sort of like beating a dead horse. Right? I got it. Yeah. And then the seeing is, the emphasis shifts to the seeing, not the looking, and that's that. Yeah. And a lot of times, most of us have ex- free samples of that all day, but the the stubbornness of the mind claiming it to be you, yeah, just keeps happening, doesn't it? So you're having, a, let's say, a quote-unquote beautiful moment, but then the mind arises and says, I'm having a beautiful moment. Yeah? And if there's an interest and attention into that statement, the moment seems to change, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not a beautiful moment anymore. It's something that's been captured as a beautiful moment by you, but it's not a beautiful moment anymore. You see that, don't you? There's your immunity to it. Is it necessary to think for the mind to see it at some point? Or like buy into it as well? No. So that there's some, no? No. If you're trying to wait to conv- wait for the mind to get convinced, it's unconvincing. It'll be convinced now and it'll be unconvinced a half hour later. Mm-hmm. 
you could have an incredible, miraculous event, you'd probably forget it in a couple hours. You might. It would have been so thoroughly, thoroughly convinced, like 45 minutes, and then it's not convinced anymore. So the mind's continually going to be judging us. Check it out. <laughs> it has to. It's split mind. It can, it's, it's able to be convinced and unconvinced. It can't be convinced without a second. You know, It has to be convinced and unconvinced. Mm. Yeah. I think that's something that maybe some of us have waited for, is for, for it to stop being questioned. That's right. That's... Yes. And in a sense, when that's happening, you're waiting as it. Yeah. That's why it's not happening, seemingly. Because you're waiting for what it's never going to happen to. I, I, I think sometimes I think, well, when is it ever going to not be questioned? You know, like, oh, you know, but that's bullshit, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it does, if you're waiting for that, it's pointless. Just no, realize it's not you. Saying yeah. it keeps coming up. Well, it just comes up and and hold it as it's not you, and not you asking the question. You'll, if it's not you, really held as not you, your interest and attention will be, will leave that that uh, dwelling on that statement. Yes, it just will. It'll just see it as a thought that comes and goes. It's the interest and attention that takes it in time and stretches it and gives it some oomph, doesn't it? A thought doesn't have oomph. It's the my of the thought that injects it with meaning. So your head injects that with meaning and gives it a life. I would ask the question unless it's, there's some misery. <laughs> yeah. there's so misery seems to be a, de- a denier of what that is. Yeah? yeah, physical or emotional misery, then you kind of look and go, So, if that question came up based on the body condition, wouldn't that reveal something to you? That it's identification as a body? Sure. That the mind is given a lot of meaning to? Yeah. Well, there you have it. It's like 800 pages of scriptures. You see that? So, why this, why this thought means a lot to me, it's about the body. Yeah, there you go. Isn't what your mind does is just give meaning to things? So, so the biggest mean what could what would be the biggest meaning it could give anything? If the mind gives meaning to things, what would be the biggest meaning it could give anything? This is true. Well, I would say the biggest meaning it could give anything is that it's you. Oh yeah. So I would say it's given the body the biggest meaning it can come up with, which is it's you, and it's bigger than giving the meaning of something being God. Because you are more important than God here, to you. Yeah? So I would say the biggest meaning the mind can give is to give the meaning of something as me. And it's given it to the body. Does it believe it? Mostly not. It thinks it's the soul or something that's going to leave the body when it gets too bad or whatever. I'll be in another body, so fuck it. I don't really (laughs) care about this body. But in fact, it's identified as that body. So it's given, even though it may not like the body. And many minds that people are in do not like the body. It doesn't. The body, they feel, is limiting them. It doesn't like it. This is imposing its limitations on me. I should be able to fly and do whatever I fucking want and have everyone love me and da 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 Yeah? Yes? But it's given the body the meaning of being you, so it is wed to the body. And it's not actually that happy about being wed to the body. But its only way of claiming this life was through the fucking body. There's still an I, though, in the spirit. Like, in the claiming of the spirit that goes through the body, I've heard that from so many people. There's not an I in the spirit, no. You don't have an I there that says, oh, I'm going to be born again in another body? That's not the spirit. No, no, I know. That's what people, some people believe. That there'll be this thing that transfers. That's a mental idea, yeah. 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 It's the mind again, but the mind, I bet you, I'm telling you, the mind's probably not happy with its situation in the body, but it's its way of claiming the life, yeah? So it had to identify with this, yeah? And therefore, one of the ways it, it gets away from its being limited is to say, I'm going to be in another life, I'm going to go off and into another life, yes? Like there's something there. Like, it, like it's a soul, yes. But its, act, its identification as a body is how it claims the life, but it's really not happy being a body. Have you noticed? Have you ever done a lot of drugs in your life? Yeah. 
Have you ever done like taking one hit of acid and then your mind says, well, let's take six more hits of acid? No, I haven't done that. Which could have put your body to a life and death situation, but it doesn't really seem to care about the body condition, does it? Yeah? But it uses the body all the time as the identification. The only way you could claim seeing is that something's looking, and that something is going to be cast as the body. Yes, the only way it could claim the seeing as what it's doing is by the body. In this little situation, right? Yeah. So the identification as the body is the biggest meaning the mind can give anything. It's given the body the meaning of being you. Yeah. And if you see that as not you, it frees you from the mind. Yes. The mind stops looking. And it and it's re- starts reflecting its true nature, which is seeing. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm dominating this conversation. Sorry, <laughs> guys. But is there is there also I'm trying to get to people who believe there's this. But why are we look? What are we looking for here tonight? You're saying, you're yeah. saying there's this just the spirit. I'm I also think there's this there's this attachment to something that doesn't that can move outside the body. I just thought you said you believe it. No, oh. I think that people do believe that. Oh, well, who are those people? <laughs> well, Does we anyone believe that here? No. Then we're having a conversation about some people who aren't even here. <laughs> well, I hope your answer helps them, <laughs> yeah. and you get to them. <laughs> when we get... <laughs> I know, that's mine. Have you ever died in this life? I've had the opportunity to die a couple of times. No. Well, my distinct ex- sense of it is when you die, that voice in your head that's claiming it's a soul or something is just the voice box of this body. When the body dies, it dies. Mm-hmm. And most of us have been on a time delay living an interpretation, and when you die, you're going to miss the death because you'll be waiting for your head to tell you what happened, and it's going to be dead. So that moment you die, you're unconscious, you're waiting for the head to say, hey, what happened, head? Oh, you just died. You're never going to hear that, and there's no one going to be there to hear it. And that's not going anywhere. The voice box doesn't have wings and flies away and finds another body to adhere to. <laughs> it's, it's of the brain and body. Yeah. Any questions? No? go off and off and on and on it, but it's very direct and clear. What's looking right now is what's seen. Yeah. And if there can be a pause, or, and that, that pause, that mental pause surrounds the seeing instead of thoughts and claiming, there would be a sense, and that pause would be the mind's reflection of seeing. Yeah, But usually the seeing is immediately claimed and turned into I'm looking. But if there is a pause around that event of just seeing, what rings through that pause is the seeing. Yeah? If the pause isn't felt and the seeing is claimed by the mind, then it becomes you looking very quickly. And then that has a linear projection. Yes? In the moment of the seeing, there's a pause. The mind hasn't reacted yet to it. And in that pause, 
which is like a timeless quote-unquote moment, there's a sense of the seeing. That sense of the seeing can have a huge effect on you. Peaceful as an effect, but some download also. And then that pause, even though it seems not to be long, is infinite, really. Yes? So if that pause is honored, if you've ever had a sample of it, and the emphasis starts shifting to that, that moment of seeing is almost freezed. Yeah? where there's a lot of, quote-unquote, time around it, that pause. It's not time, but your attention and interest, yes? And then that interest and attention doesn't forget that. In all of the day that it's spending meeting things, attending to things, and being interested in things, it has a sense of from, from where it comes, yeah? And every moment in, in that act of seeing is a pause, there's a pause around seeing. That pause, you want to call it silence, whatever. That pause, if noted by your head, when it reflects that instead of you and all the other objects, yes, and this freaking world, when it reflects that, that's like seeing its original face in Zen, which is no face at all. It's like the attention, instead of being addicted to outside, actually sees where it comes from. And it tends to, no matter how it's spent that day, it brings that flavor of what it is to the act of seeing. So while you're seeing all day, it reaffirms what's seeing. Yes? It doesn't matter if you're looking at clothes at freaking Westminster or you're looking at an icon from a Greek church. The seeing itself is impregnated with that pause of recognition. So now seeing... All the day that you're looking for and not looking for is impregnated with that information of seeing. And it has a huge impact here. And that impact isn't on time, so it doesn't erode. It doesn't have to be maintained. It doesn't have to be practiced. It doesn't have to be pumped up. It doesn't have to get a, you know, an XL super turbocharged this or that. It it's timeless, so there's no erosion in it. Yes? The impact is the impact. It doesn't lessen or doesn't increase. It's just what's so. And it has a huge influence on you and I running around here. Because while you're running around here, what everything's going on, this and that, there is that stillness. There is that pause. There is that pause... Yes, that captures the seeing, and then that pause is captured by the seeing. Yeah. And it makes an impression on your mind. Yes? And when the mind has an impression, this life is an expression of that. Yes? All we are now is impressions of energetic situations, mental states that are expressing themselves into this place, aren't we? That's what's happening. What are deep mental grooves or some scars? They're just impressions that the mind has had that are expressing in behavior through us. Yes. This impression of this pause, noting the seeing, expresses itself here as traveling later. That's what happens for me, anyway. Not for me, but as this. You travel lighter here. Because while you're traveling later, you've already lost your head. So there's no losing it or getting it. You've lost your head. And of course, because it's not of time, it doesn't slow up. It doesn't lose its effect. It doesn't come to a stop. It's always self-generated because it's timeless. Yes? The timeless seeing and the pause. What do you feel here at a meeting that's halfway decent? It's a pause in the room. There's an energy, yes? That pause... If C 
scene could talk here, that would be its voice, that pause, that's its talking here. That's its like, calling you. That's it, hey, Joe, you know, pay attention, whatever. So all the time the attention seems to be spent, it's never lost now. Because it's of its source, yes. So you don't have to be, I can't be doing this, I can't be looking at this. Whatever's in front of you is as the seeing of it, yes? And there's no no reservoir of seeing ever gets exhausted. linear story. I'll tell you, if you could write a linear story, and if you, if you asked for a great gift, if there was a magician in this room that could give you a great gift, you know what would be the greatest gift to ask if you wanted to change your fucking life? is a pause. That night before I went back to that bar and got run over by a car twice, could I have just had a five seconds where I you know, didn't immediately go by the impulse? The whole life would have looked different. The whole life would have looked different for with a five-second pause in it. Yes? The time when I had those five extra thoughts, I said, I should kill this motherfucker. And then I shot the person, now I'm in jail for the rest of my life. If I would have had a pause there, that would never have happened. Yes? What about the pause prior to all this place? Can you imagine the effect it would have on this place, that pause that's constantly prior to it, that's timeless? It's called being free here. Yeah. No matter how it looks, no matter what condition you're in or circumstances, one of the most freest persons I ever saw was someone who had bone cancer in Perth, Australia, because they were awake. They were in that pause in the scene. If I would have had any choice to see anyone there, it would have been her, because there was such a beautiful state to, to watch. Someone who was dying in that pause, yeah. After the seeing turn, been claimed by looking, there is no pause after that. It's constant seeking. It's all minds doing. It's seeking, seeking, seeking. It's self and self and selfing. For you to appear to be solid, it has to spin very quickly. So that some, through that spin, like we went the other day, a solidity will, will appear to you. To your mind will think there's a solid you. Selfie, 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 selfie. It's never going to stop, ever. You're going to be seeking. You've been seeking since the tit. You will not stop seeking. <laughs> you have not stopped. You are incessantly seeking it. That's the nature of mind. Yeah. The, le- the, the next pause it's going to need is death. Really. Can you imagine living from a pause now? Living as if you're dead, in a sense. That's true life. Living as if you're fucking dead finally <laughs> is really living. Like all these people pointed out, St. Francis, die to the self and you'll be reborn. Yes? It's in self forgetting that you're reborn. You know, get it. <laughs> what the fuck? How am I remembering self? Through the daily narrative all day, through having faith in thoughts. What bring, what other, how does self get brought to you? By thought, and thought alone. There's nothing called self that something can pick it up and bring it to you. Oh, here's yourself. I found it outside. Yeah. It. No, it's, pre- it's presented to you by thought. Yes? It's called selfing. And selfing is a verb, and it's an incessant verb, but there's pauses all around it. But you can't pause as a self. Yes? No. No. Pause being timeless doesn't end. It doesn't have to because it doesn't begin. Have you ever, you know, people think they, some people say, you know, oh, that person died really nice. They just fell asleep. But, you know, have you ever been in a situation, like in a car accident, where you were spinning and it was like an eternity? Time is a construction of mind. You're thinking someone's going out like that. Their mind may be in an eternal loop of time. You don't know what the hell's happening here. Yeah. Yes. So 
Well, there's this pause. There's the living one. It coincides with the scene. Yeah. You're looking for it. Have you found it? No. It can't be found in time. And it can't be found as you. Can you uh, go at this, go through this set of notions? Um, Probably not. Same thoughts, only, well, because you recognize that who you took to be yourself is not yourself, that you also see that who other people take to be themselves is not who they are. So it's always talked about from the person in the chair there, uh, in, from their point of view, or to the person they're questioning uh, of their own experience. But you have to, um, you must also see everyone else around you differently. Do you know what I mean? <coughs> Yes, I do. So, is it possible I think that, or is it just too uh, foggy to talk about in, in any effective way? That you see someone, and then you see well, the appearance yeah. also? Yeah, so that I mean, you see through whatever uh, role they're assigned themselves as yeah. their, their, their character and their actions. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I just wonder if it's possible to speak about it in that way. What, ha- what happens with me is there's a seeing, and then there's an appearance, and you can see the interest and attention that's feeding that appearance. You don't see it. I some you don't see it visually, but you see it. Yes. The interest and attention of the mind that's feeding that appearance. So there's seeing, yes, and all there is is that going on. And then there's seeing the appearance, and that appearance is sort of given a form through interest and attention. So when I see someone who's lost interest and attention in themselves, there's a different feeling. Yeah. So then when you see someone who's interested and attentive to themselves as this, their appearance seems stronger. Yes? Or denser, let's say. So there's a seeing of all there is is that, and then there's a seeing of an appearance. Yeah? yeah? Does that help with you? And the appearance is sort of thicker or, let's say, more opaque by the interest and attention of the mind. Yeah? Yeah. Someone who doesn't have interest and attention in that appearance, it's different. It's just different, yes? Yeah. Yeah. More alive. Yeah, yeah. But you see appearances, and you see that all there is is seeing, and yet seeing sees appearances here, too. Yeah? So you're seeing this, and I see this is also seen as the interest and attention around this. Yeah? There's a lot of interest and attention. It's like almost energy, and you can get a sense of that when you're seeing somebody. Yeah? Does that make any sense? Yeah, I guess I don't really know what, where I'm going to go with that. I'm just I'm always sort of curious. You know, so many people are wrapped up in life dramas that you, you know you can just see right through, and then you can decide what level you want to relate to them. Um, I don't. I, I, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. They like it's. It's just a more opaqueness or less opaqueness, yeah. more transparent or more less transparent. Yeah. But you can see people, and you realize, you know, someone's house is on fire. You're not going to give them talk to them about this. You're going to just tell them where a pail of water is. Yeah, it becomes obvious. You're not going to go, oh, by the way, you're not really burning. You know, <laughs> if they believe they're burning, 
that's their experience. So it is a pail of water. It's more hopeful than the human philosophy that they're not burning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Those are obvious things. But I mean, you can see I mean, I did a lot of talks with ill people, which are alcoholics and addicts, yeah? So some nights we'd be doing a talk, and then I could sense something going on. And then suddenly I would, they'd be asking, people wanted to ask questions, and I knew not to pick this one person, but I picked them anyway. And then something would happen, and it would almost be like this, maybe I shouldn't record this. <laughs> it's getting a little too uh, shamanistic.